So what is the secret to being metabolically flexible, being able to switch between carbs and fat for fuel? Well, you can't be flexible without the right fuel. So let's dive into that today. What is the right diet for metabolic flexibility? Before we begin, please hit the like button to like this video, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell to be notified when I post new videos. I try for every Friday, I usually do it, but sometimes I have some little hiatuses, but that helps the channel grow. And I'm Dr. Shelley Meyer. I'm here to provide you with gut health, hormone health, and metabolic health and expertise. I do a lot of functional medicine videos and I'd really love your support to um, help grow the channel, help to share the message here and hopefully help you feel better on your journey to healing. So I am a functional medicine doctor, a family physician, and a registered dietitian. And I work with, I've worked with hundreds of patients. I've worked, helped thousands of people here on YouTube. So there's a lot of information on the channel. So if you want to dive into the other videos, there's tons of related information if you feel like you need to learn more about any of those topics that I mentioned. But today we're going to talk about metabolic flexibility. Now, if you saw last week's video, it was all about why would you possibly, why could, how could you be metabolically inflexible? So let's again review what is metabolic flexibility. Well, that's the ability to switch between burning fat and burning carbs and sugar for fuel. So we are quite often in the United States, in particular, metabolically inflexible, meaning that we um, can't switch between those two fuel sources and we're quite often in carb burning mode, which sounds good, right? Because you're like, well, I like to eat carbs. Let me burn through a lot of them. It's not good because they're quick fuel. And then when um, you go through those, you don't burn through all of them. You can store the extra carbs as uh, as glycogen in your muscles, but you don't you ever then get into fat burning mode and then you tend to store fat and some of the extra sugar gets stored as fat too. So we don't want to constantly be in carb burning mode. We want to be able to switch between the two. So um, how to do we achieve that? How do we achieve that flexibility and be able to be a more flexible machine, you know, more uh, fueled up in the appropriate way? So, so two people can eat the same meal and one can not switch over. They can stick in carb burning mode and not ever get into that fat burning mode. Ideally, when we're metabolically flexible, we want to be able to eat that meal, burn through those carbs, maybe store some of the extra glucose as glycogen in our muscles, a storage form of, of fuel, and then switch into our fat burning mode and burn through that fat. But when you're metabolically inflexible, you're not going to do that. And you usually when you're metabolically inflexible or insulin resistant, which I did talk about in some other videos that I'll link above and in last week's video. So let's dive into how we could use nutrition and the right prop, the right kind of fueling to support that metabolic flexibility. First, let me intro this with it's not going to happen overnight. If you start doing these steps and you notice I'm not any more metabolically flexible than I was a week ago. It's not going to happen in a week. It's probably not going to happen in two weeks. It may take a month. It may take 90 days. So you may not see results in your weight or in your metabolism right away. Stick it out, especially if you're feeling okay on it or feeling good on it. So number one, um, what are we going to do? We are going to change from a high carb, high sugar diet that could be contributing to metabolically inflexible to a lower carb, lower, not calorie, but a lower carb, um, definitely low sugar diet to encourage metabolic flexibility. We don't necessarily have to go all the way into ketosis or into keto. That probably will get you they're faster for metabolic flexibility, but it's not for everyone and not everyone feels good on keto. And especially in the beginning, you might feel low energy, but that's okay. Stick it out for those 90 days. So, but it's important not to be low carb, strictly, strictly low carb keto forever. You do want to be able to have those days where you have medium carb days. So, you know, you want to be metabolically flexible because you can get stuck in the 
metabolically inflexible stage with keto or low carb if you are not supporting yourself with the right fuel. So it's important to have mostly lower carb days and then some medium carb days, all depending on activity too, and you wanna be able to fuel your activity. So number two, change the time of your eating. So you want to be able to suppress your insulin by eating to support an insulin sensitivity and not an insulin resistance. I do have a free PDF on this. It's gonna have how to check for insulin resistance, how to talk to your doctor about it, and how to support it, how to eat appropriately. So don't worry about writing all this down. It will be in my free PDF that I'm gonna have be mentioning here. But we wanna change the way we're eating, change the time that we're eating. So ideally you want to suppress insulin resistance and promote insulin sensitivity by fasting doesn't have to be 18 hours, but anywhere between 12 and 18 hours could be beneficial. If you're currently having a nighttime snack and your body's not used to any type of fasting other than your sleep, start with 10 hours. Move yourself up into that 12 to 18 hours and find the happy window for you. But that is a, a, a great way to get more metabolically flexible and more into insulin sensitivity. The number three would be spacing out your meals. So spacing out your meals helps to suppress your insulin. Why? Because you're not constantly eating and, and triggering that insulin. So space out those meals. I would recommend at least five hours apart on your meals, but four hours in the minimum. I mean, I would recommend five hours apart, four hours at least between your meals and try not to snack in between meals. Before we go on, tell me in the comments if you're struggling with um, structuring your eating, if you've tried low carb, if you've tried keto, if you've had success, and where you found success with metabolic flexibility, any of the above. It's great when we share and we are able to learn from each other. So let's get back into it. So what else can make us metabolically flexible? Well, I talked about having some days that you have some higher carbs and sorry, I have a bug in here, and some days where you um, have most days where you have your lower carb. So for an example, let's let's talk about carb cycling. So cycle in some of those medium or higher carb days. There is a device I have been using called the Lumen device that I do have, a, the next video is gonna be on that, that can help you figure out what, like really individualize it. But if not, you can base it on your activity. So if you are going to be higher, act, have a higher, be more active that day, um, then you could add more carbs in that day and your body will get used to having some more carbs again. So for example, let's say you're eating low carb, 50 grams of carb is a good goal for a lot of people. Um, and that's net carbs, that's total carbs minus fiber. So make sure you're, if you're tracking and that's the way you need to be doing it because it's hard to know off the top of your head, um, you're using something like Carb Manager, which I love, or some kind of tracker that tracks fiber and tracks your net carbs. So anyway, um, 50 grams is a good goal for carbs. If you don't feel good on that and you need to increase from there, that's fine. You need to do what's right for you. But 50 grams most days, and then on your more active days where you're doing more cardio or even more endurance kind of training or just active, more active in general, that day do 100 grams of carbs. So vary it up like that. And um, again, if you're using Lumen, that's a great way to know when to have a, a moderate or higher carb day. But if you're not, cycle that in every few days and see how you feel especially how you feel if you do your higher carb um, eating earlier in the day, and I'm gonna talk about that next, and that fuels your workout and you feel good after your workout, that kind of tells you that you've eaten the right amount of carbs there. Um, so you match your hard carb day with your high exercise day, eat the carbs earlier in the day. So that is my next point, is that you do want to eat um, most of your carbs in the early part of the day. So when the sun comes up somewhere around that earlier morning time, have your largest meal of the day and have your most amount of carbs. So let's say you're having a 50 gram carb day, you could have 30 grams of carbs in the morning and um, 20 at lunch. So you're having like a moderately sized lunch. You're gonna have a little bit lower carbs at lunch than you would at breakfast. But at lunch, you would then you know, make sure you're eating enough protein and make sure you're adding some fat in. And then at dinner, you're gonna have the smallest meal of the day. 
I know that's shocking for some people, but that is the best way to do it for insulin sensitivity and metabolic flexibility. So you're gonna have a smallest meal of the day, sorry, um, and then you're gonna have the lowest amount of carbs. So you can make up for those lost carbs with a few more calories from car from protein and fat, but you don't. You still want that to be your smallest meal of the day. So you're gonna look for at lunch like twenty breakfast thirty grams of carbs, lunch twenty grams of carbs and dinner 10 grams of carbs. These are examples. I don't know you and I can't be your personal provider, so you're gonna have to figure out what feels best to you and if low carb eating and keto eating feel terrible for you and you've made it past the initial time where they feel terrible for everyone, which would be you know that two to three week range, and then you've stuck it out for 90 days, let's say, then don't eat like this, meet with somebody, try different things, but just don't, usually don't eat high carb. Um, unless you just know that that's the best thing for you. Okay, so if you want to learn more about this structure and more about how to tell if you're insulin resistant and how to ask your doctor to test for that and what the numbers should look like, check out my free PDF on insulin sensitivity and my insulin resistant cheat sheet, which I will have attached. You just have to sign up for my email list. I provide you with some helpful information there and helpful information about the videos and some special offers, but I don't spam you at all. Also, so thank you for watching and please like and subscribe and share so that this channel can grow. Um, I do this on top of my private practice, so um, sometimes I, I don't always have enough time, but if, if the channel keeps growing, then I can make more time for the channel. So again, please like, subscribe. I really appreciate your support and, and share this video if you know anybody that is struggling with metabolic inflex inflexibility, gut health problems, or hormone health problems. And thank you for your support of the channel. Please check out the links in the description. Let me know any questions or comments you have on this or any other topic in the comments. Uh, not any other topic, but anything related to the videos. And until next time, be kind to yourself, be kind to the world around you, and I'll see you soon.